And so that's the question, Jason. Like, what must one prove? We went through this at our school. I and there's and there's still a vaccine mandate in place at our school, kicking in at 16. Thank God my kids aren't there yet, and I'm really hoping they're going to see reason before we get there. But it was the same thing you're going through, where they say they're going to give a religious exemption potentially or a medical exemption potentially, but they don't. The, the hoops you have, the only medical exemption that they'll give at our school is if you had a negative reaction to the first shot, but you will be getting a shot of the COVID vaccine in your arm. All right. Only then. Oh, great. So uh, I have a lifelong uh, blood clotting, clotting problem. Not good enough. We have to make sure you have problem clotting after this shot. That's absurd. And on the religious exemption, I know personally of people who, there was one woman who was on the cover of Catholic magazine and they were like, nope. So, okay, because Catholics, they tend to be pro-life and they tend not to be in favor of anything having to do with stem cells gotten from aborted babies. And this is where you guys come in on your objections. I know you're Baptist, Jason, but similar in everything I just said. And so you, you are subjected to the indignity of having to sit across from two lawyers who were not Baptists who cross-examine you without representation on your part. You don't have a lawyer there. You don't have somebody who knows what they know in terms of like, you know, just trying to be honest and answer the questions. And they make you try to prove just how faithful you are, <laughs> right? Is that basically what happened? That's exactly what happened, uh, Megan. I mean, you know, the, the conversation started off with, hey, these questions are going to be very personal in nature. So, I, I, I mean, what what do you expect when the conversation starts like that, right? Uh, so it, it was... Um, you know, Megan, I, you made a comment earlier, right? That um, there is there is something about being where you are now, right? And mm -hmm. it was the meaning, for for lack of a better word, the the interview, if that's what you want to call it, process, um, and having to explain why I believe uh, what I believe, and getting questioned about, well, you know, leaders in your religion have said that it's okay to take this vaccine. And, you know, Megan, my, my belief, what I've always been taught, what I've always believed is that's why it is called a personal relationship with God, right? Yeah. Is because it's between you and God. And I am not here to judge anybody else or anybody else's decisions. If you ask me my opinion and what I believe the Bible says, I will offer that opinion. But at the end of the day, that's your decision to make. And so, you know, for the first time in my life, I had to justify, I guess, what my beliefs are. Mm. And um, I, I, I will say this, that, um, you know, the Bible says God's plans are not our plans, right? And uh, his ways are not our ways. So um, I, I just want to be, uh, tell you that I agree with you uh, of your previous statement that God takes us down paths that we don't know we're going down sometimes, right? <laughs> As you probably yeah. well know. But yeah. uh, so thankful, uh, and I truly believe that we are right here at this moment, at this juncture, talking to you in our lives where we are for a reason. And And to me, that is to say, uh, shed some light. You know, we're, we're called to be a light, right? And, and I think that's why we're here now. Oh, I'm glad you said that. I, I agree with you 100%. And you guys are in a position now where you can fight for a lot of people who didn't know what to do when this kind of thing hit, whether it was in the NBA or elsewhere. And I'm sure there's a lot of refs on that list who are behind you and are angry that they were forced to take the vaccine in order to keep their jobs. So you guys are, are heroes to those people. Um, on the subject of the exemption, Jason, I understand both of you had to go back to your, to your minister, to your church, and actually get like a letter verifying that this is so offensive that your religious belief is genuine. Like, you, I can't imagine having to go to my priest and say, will you please write a letter that my religious beliefs are genuine? What do you do? Like, how do you figure that out? I'm here every Sunday. Well, what does that tell you that I, I really believe? Maybe I'm just here for my kids. Maybe I'm just here because I like, you know, getting out of the house on Sundays. You have no idea. How does he know, right? It's like, and, and as you point out, the, the, the leader of my church too, the current pope, 
there's a lot of disagreements between that pope and most Catholics. <laughs> he does not speak for his entire flock. The relationship is with God. It's with Jesus. It's not with Pope Francis. It's not with even your particular priest in the Baptist church. But you still had to go and humble yourself in a way to try to get this third party to say your your religious beliefs are legit. What was that like for you? You know, Megan, it, it's funny. Um, I actually had to submit two uh, religious exemptions, so to speak, because when I was first notified um, via uh, email from the HR department, they provided a link that you could click on and submit your request, right? So I did that. Radio silence. I hear nothing back. So I follow up with the HR department and said, hey, we're drawing close to this date. Do I need to do anything else? No, you're good. It's all good, right? Well, then I received notification that it, it had been, I, I guess, quasi denied because I just, I received another email saying, hey, we noticed you haven't updated your vaccine status to vaccinated yet. And you've got X amount of days before your security card doesn't work anymore. So at that point, I submitted a formal uh religious exemption uh through my attorney and and that's when we had to to get the pastoral letter uh to help support because obviously what i did originally was not good enough and you know uh, megan i luckily uh i knew the beliefs of my pastor up front um we, we have a very uh, pro-life uh, group of ministers at our church. And, um, you know, in as so much as they've adopted children, right? Um, and, and so I, I, I didn't have as much problem probably with that as, as probably many, many others would have had. Uh, but so thankful for the support. And, and again, in, in my beliefs, um, you know, life begins at conception, right? And so that is my belief. And luckily, uh, I did have the ability uh, to get that support from my pastor to then submit. But, um, you know, obviously it wasn't good enough. So, Kenny, the, they... Um they look at you and basically want you to be a Jehovah's Witness. It, that's kind of the only way to get this religious exemption. If, if you're willing to take any modern medicine, they see you as not able to raise a religious exemption from what I read. And even from our own experience, they, they kind of want to make you, uh, saying I have an objection to the fact that the COVID vaccines were tested using stem cells from aborted fetuses. You don't, they're like, well, there's no aborted fetus cells in the vaccines. We know that, okay even accepting that. They admit that the testing process involved stem cells from aborted fetuses. They admit that. So that's a real problem for some Catholics, and it's not a problem for others, but for some it is. And yet they continue trying to question you in, in your meeting, Kenny, as I understand it, as if you're a Jehovah's Witness. And any admission that you've taken any sort of drug any prescription drug, any over-the-counter drug is ball game for you because as I read their statements, they asked you if you had taken, they asked you about your medical history. I mean, it's amazing. You could have had so much fun with them. You could have been like, well, after I solved the syphilis and then the gonorrhea, <laughs> it, could, it could be so fun. Okay, but anyway. <laughs> so they want to go through your medical history in detail. They, quote, extracted an admission, they feel, that you took hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin as a prophylactic measure against COVID. So did like half the doctors in America, okay? Um, then according to, their, to these lawyers who are cross-examining you, your use of these drugs was a gotcha moment because in their view, their use logically conflicts with your state of belief that vaccination pollutes the human body, you see? Because what they say is that it's you do not, in fact, believe solely in divine healing and in the healing ab abilities of the human body. So, aha, 
you can no longer object to the use of the stem cell without all that. So what did you make of that whole thing? Well, there's a couple things in the interview, Megan, that were interesting. First of all, I recorded the whole interview, so I still have it. That's Smart. the wonderful, that's the wonderful thing. Um, back to one, one thing, I'd like to cover a little bit on on, on what how you were what, what you were talking to Jason about is again, I was interviewed by a, a Jewish attorney, attorney I've known. He's been in the league almost as long as I have, and so um, I knew things. Some questionings were com- some questions were coming because other people have been interviewed before I was. And so we, we had talked and we knew some of the questions that were coming. And it was just, you're right. We knew they were all, I got you moments. They were going to try to find whatever they could to find fault, to come up with whatever they could. So one of my conversations with um, Neil Stern was his name. I can't wait till he's deposed. I can't wait to listen to him on the stand because we'll have our day with him. We will be able to interrogate him like he interrogated Jason and I. Um, it was interesting because I said to him, I said, Jason, I, I, I said, I said, Neil, are you Jewish? He said, yes, I am. I said, okay, have you ever been to Krakow? Have you, have you ever been to Krakow? Have you ever been to Auschwitz? No, never been to Europe. So you do know that six million of your Jewish compatriots were killed in World War II by the Nazis. Well, he said, yeah, I know that, Maurer. I, I, I know that. I said, well, you were aware that the Pope in 1944 turned his back, knew, knowing very well what happened with your Jewish people, and um, basically turned his back. Not one church in, in Italy was even bombed. Are you aware of that? There was silence. He wouldn't even he wouldn't even give me an answer. I said, so if you're going to ask me what my what my take is on the pope's current stance, I didn't agree with the pope back in 1944. I wasn't alive then, but I did. I wouldn't have agreed with him then. Would you have? No, no, you wouldn't. You wouldn't give a statement. I said, how about in the 1980s when all the children were were, were molested by priests in the 1980s by the cat? Now, I love I, I'm a believe I, I believe in the Catholic religion. But you're right, as you said earlier, Megan, I don't believe in a lot of what this pope has said or some of what the clergy has said in the past. So I said in the 1980s when all the priests were, you know, they were all, it was proven what they had done to these, you know, these these little little children, little kids. And yet not one of them was was persecuted by the, you know, not one of them were charged by the, by the pope. I said, uh, Neil, I said, do you agree with that? Am I supposed to agree with the pope's stance on that? I said, it's a personal choice. Your religion yeah. is a personal choice. I shouldn't have to defend my love and my faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. I shouldn't have to defend that. Who are you, NBA, to have to defend, to make us defend that? There is so much to love about fall, from the cooler temperatures to the changing leaves, pumpkin spiced everything. What better way to soak up the best of this season than with a Michael Phelps swim spa by Master Spas? A Michael Phelps swim spa combines the benefits of a pool with the therapy of a hot tub. It comes in a variety of sizes to complement almost any yard, even if it's a small one. Master Spas worked with Michael Phelps to develop an at-home training and fitness solution that you can use year-round in any season, even in the winter, believe it or not. As your fall calendar fills up, a Michael Phelps swim spa is the perfect place to spend time together as a family. Michael Phelps Swim Spas are 100% made in the USA by Master Spas, the world's largest swim spa manufacturer. It is energy efficient. You can use it all year long, as I mentioned. Go to masterspas.com, put in the promo code MK, and that will save you $1,000 on a Michael Phelps Swim Spa or $500 on a Master Spas Hot Tub. Masterspas.com, promo code MK. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.